Previously on Accelerate, we reviewed the 2021 Genesis GV80, but today we've got something crazy. This is the 2021 Ram TRX. So I never start off videos with a launch, but this car deserves it. It's very well deserving. They even put a launch button for me right here, looking at me. There's lots of different modes, eight different modes. We'll get into that, but launch is where we're gonna start this video off. So let's get it. Let's get this TRX to launch. Pretty straightforward, hit the launch button here and it says apply brake pressure. So I will apply brake pressure, apply full throttle, apply full throttle, okay for countdown start. So I should press the okay button and now there's a pre-stage stage. Now I got green, 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 <laughs> oh my god this thing rifles and when i said green 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 stage i meant oh amber 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 and green <clears throat> wow this is a truck i see what you do in fca salantis Dodge, Chrysler, not sure what to call you, but this thing is monstrous. This thing is a 6.2 liter beast that makes 702 horsepower. And this thing is as fast as my former R8. And you wanna know how fast that is? Yes, this fast. Yes, this thing does zero to 60 in the high three second range. Oh my God, I can't believe it's coming out of my mouth. Yes, it does. It also does the quarter mile in the mid 12s. It's just unfathomable. But the crazy part is, is that this engine is actually put in pretty much most of Chrysler's product. It's put in the Hellcat. It's put in the Jeep Trackhawk. It's put in the Challenger, the Charger, and even a Dodge Journey. Imagine this thing in a Dodge Journey. This thing makes 702 horsepower and 650 foot pounds of torque, or pound feet if you'd like to call it, but man, and I know I'm excited about the power, but today I will also talk about how this is to daily drive. I will talk about how this is to park. I will talk about the smoothness, the quietness, and everything that comes along with the TRX. Is it a daily driver? Let's find out. Well, somebody obviously got the memo at FCA because they realized that they're gonna run out of time to sell their 6.2 liter supercharged motor with this kind of power because EV is really around the corner. And they realized, man, we cannot make this like one year giving you this, one year giving you a little bit more, and every year giving you something small. We're trying to throw the towel in, and we want to put this motor in everything we make. Man, thank God we're here. I'm so excited to be at the point where we can actually get what we want as consumers. Now let's talk about the front. So you must be wondering why this is dirty. Well, this is a jumper, and all our jumpers that come to Accelerate are dirty. This actually looks great dirty, so much so that the owner, Phil, always is dirty because he believes that it looks the best dirty, and so do we. Now, if we talk about the front here, this looks like the Rebel. So Ram has a whole different bunch of models, but one of them is called the Rebel, and this kind of looks like a Rebel, except this is a Rebel on steroids. Now, you can see the inlets around the front headlights here. Now, these have dynamic headlights, but you can see on the side here, it has these inlets that go into an airbox, and the airbox in this thing is four times larger than, yes, the Raptor. And if you notice, this has all black everything. There's no chrome on this TRX. It's all black. Even the RAM logo's in black. And it has these front hooks in the front, two of them. They are black. And then obviously this is because it has a wider width than most conventional vehicles. So you have to have those lights up there. Now, interestingly enough, this actually sits two inches higher and it is eight inches wider per side than the regular RAM. These are eight inch fenders. Yes, eight inch fenders. So as we move it under the RAM logo, that is where the front camera is hiding, but these are actually steel. It appears to look like plastic a little bit, but these are full, obviously, steel. And underneath the vehicle, this has more skid plates than a Brinks truck. This thing is fully armored underneath. 
But let's go to the engine. So underneath this plastic panel is the 6.2 liter supercharged V8, as I mentioned, that makes 702 horsepower and 650 pound-feet of torque. But here's the catch. You can't get it in rear-wheel drive. It's only available in all-wheel drive as this is. See, Ford is coming up with the Raptor and then the Raptor R. You see, the Raptor R is supposed to make a little bit more horsepower than this, which is why Dodge is holding back the Demon engine, which is basically the same engine, just makes more power, at almost 800 horsepower. So it's gonna be really interesting to see what the future holds between the Raptor R and the TRX R. So as we move along the side here, you'll notice that this is a crew cab with a short bed. It's the only way you can get a TRX. You can't get it in any other way. You can't get a long bed. You can't get a single door. It's only sold with two full doors. And this is the extended full doors. It's not the short version. It's a full door on the back and the short bed in the back. But again, as I mentioned, this has really, really wide fender flares in the front and the back. And you'll notice that they do have 35 inch tires with bead lock, so these are all bead lock, which means that they basically have screws holding the tire together. So when you deflate the tires, they don't come off the rim. Behind that, this does have a 15 inch brake rotor, which is fairly large for a vehicle like this. They're normally a little bit smaller, so 15, I can tell you in my mind already, this has obviously good braking. But before all that starts, they made the truck to jump. Now the last FCA car we had was the Gladiator Mojave and that was designed to jump and well, yeah, we jumped it. We're just not gonna jump this one. So what kind of jumping features does it have? Well, it's got something called jump detection. It actually knows when the vehicle's off the ground because it detects the suspension travel and the rotation of the tires so it can tell if it's off the road or on the road. It also has, which is the most important part, is the Bilstein shocks that have remote reservoirs. That essentially means that the shock travel can go all the way up and all the way down because there's no fluid. It's basically the fluid stored elsewhere. It also has a rear locking diff. But besides all that, the underplating, the jump, the tires, the locking diff, how are you gonna use it? Because for us, it's all about on street. And for most people, it's probably more about on street, but keeping it dirty is key. I like the fact this does have what they call a Mopar style running board. It's all steel, it's no plastic tooth. That is nice, it just shows quality. But where is this puddle light? I would expect them to have a nice puddle light of a T-Rex eating a Raptor. That would be pretty cool. I feel ya. All right, so look how I get in and out. It's a fairly high truck to get in and out, but it is what it is. So let's take a peek in the back. But before we do, I wanna show you this gas cap. Not for anything else except for the fact that if you look at it here, this tells me that this is designed to be exported because my Ram doesn't have that. It's really for the North American market. This gas cap is for the world. It's in all kinds of languages. But moving to the back here, again, this does follow the wide body theme. It's got really wide, huge tires on the back. Uh, they are 325s. You can see that prominently when you're driving right behind it. You can see how wide it is. Now, it does have the T-Rex exterior battery and it does follow through with the front. If you look over here, it does in the front obviously has the airflow coming through. That is not, that's fake, but it does obviously follow the same design. And as we move around here, it's all black. There's no chrome against on this RAM all the way through. It does say TRX there, obviously usual four by four, but it's all black. You see, there's no chrome. It also does have hooks in the front and the back, there are two on each side. So two in the front, two in the back, that's kind of nice. And obviously you can't miss these five inch huge exhausts. They are black in color. Again, no chrome on it, but this is a cool part. It's got a third brake light hidden underneath that. There I have not seen before. Now, if you wanna know what this tows, it tows 8,100 pounds. So it depends on the boat you're towing or trail you're towing, you can tow 8,100 pounds. As far as height, this is obviously two inches higher. This is the same height as a power wagon. So it's two inches higher than a regular Ram and about the same as a power wagon. And this, again, is a 1,500 or a half ton truck. Now let's go inside and check it out. All right, so I'm in the back of the Ram. Look how wide these doors open. Really big space. Couldn't say the same about the Genesis the other day, but anyways, we jump in here. This has a unique interior. So the T-Rex has a unique interior. You can tell by all this red stitching up here, all the carbon pieces, the suede, every piece of this is covered. There's no real plastic on this thing. Even the door handle is covered in leather and it's a nice piece. And you can see this Harman Carton. So there's 19 speakers in here. Even the grab handles are all covered, wrapped in this leather. They even give you this, this little piece thing here, like you get a new couch, but here's the funny part. Bear with me superior quality and feel. Each hide of this genuine full grain leather contains markings, lines, and creases which are unique. 
This is conclusive proof that you've purchased a truck which at its core is authentic and true to the values of the Ram brand. Okay, so it's got creases and that's authentic to the Ram brand. With proper care and handling, your TRX seats will age to a one of a kind appearance. So this one will age differently than the rest, I guess. But regardless of that, look at the back of these seats. They're pretty cool. They actually have like pieces that you can put tools or pens or whatever you want to put. But I like the fact they have carbon all the way around here. Again, this is the same as every other Ram in terms of the design and its shape, but the pieces they put along with it are different. This also has vented seats in the back and heated seats on both on the outer sides. And yes, I love the back seat of Ram. There's a ton of room here. And yeah, black headliner. Hmm, interesting. What else there? No. Let's go to the front. All right, the front seat of the TRX. All right, so I got this nice, as soon as I get in this thing, I got a nice suede armrest for me. It says TRX, supercharged 6.2 liter Hemi. It tells me the horsepower at 702, the VIN number, the American flag, and yes, the supercharger, along with how many pounds of boost. But everything else feels Ram-like. It does obviously give me all this suede, as I mentioned on the side. The Harman Kardon speaker, especially the tweeter, is has a red backing in it, which is kind of odd, but maybe I guess red is their theme color on this thing. Oh, interesting. Check this launch button out. This launch button has a stage light. That is awesome. Like, cool. But the biggest difference here is obviously the fact that it has a center shifter. You see, all Rams actually just have the knob dial right here. It has the auto lock, and again, because this is not available in two-wheel drive or rear-wheel drive, it's only available in all-wheel drive. It does have four-wheel drive auto, four-wheel drive high, and then low, and then obviously the axle lock, and that kind of stuff. But that totally is in the same spot as where the park reverse neutral drive is on every other Ram. This has a shifter, like a car shifter, from what looks to be from a Challenger or a Charger. It is pretty cool. And when I was shifting gears getting here, using this, it's very smooth and very car-like. But that's the, to that's the biggest change that I noticed. And I noticed that this does have a rear view camera. Now, not just a rear view camera, but a rear view camera mirror, so you can actually see what's behind you when you're driving. You can actually see that that's a camera, not your actual eyes, which is a big GM thing. So I'm really surprised they have it here, which is really nice to see. For some reason, only GMs had it, and so I really like the fact that Dodge now has it. And yes, they do follow through with carbon all the way through, again, from the doors to the bottom of the steering wheel, which is flat bottom. This is definitely a sporty steering wheel with suede on the top. Now, with suede, this is pretty normal, but I always find that the Alcantara does sort of uh, fade away and this one has just about a thousand miles and you can already see that there is some wear on the top of the steering wheel which is pretty common just something to notice for you guys that if you don't have an Alcantara or suede steering wheel that's what happens over time now if we talk about the seats here yes these are ventilated and heated and it does have a cool TRX logo here but other than that they are the same sort of shape and design as the regular Ram seat they just have a little different feeling but they're pretty much the same design I should say up here, you do have your uh, sunroof screen that you can tilt it. You can have the sunshade come through and you can open up the back windshield. Another piece to note is that this center console cannot be slid back and forth for different compartments. The only compartment you have is actually right here. It's, it's still a good size, no doubt, but oh, look at that. Is that cool? That is a T-Rex. Ooh, that's a nugget I see down there. I'll show you guys in a second. And also behind here um, is your conversion table. But you can't actually slide this back because it does have a shifter, you see, an actual shifter. You do have your two cup holders and it does have wireless charging, but only for one phone. You can't wireless charge two phones. Uh, you can wireless charge on the left side, not on the right side. It does have two USBs and uh, two USB-Cs. But really, it's all about the drive. And speaking of drive, let's talk about the drive modes here. So when I hit the TRX button, I do have, as I mentioned, this display. But underneath that, I do have arrows left and right, which are the drive modes. So if I show you here, we have custom, which shuts traction control off. Uh, mud and sand, rock, Baja, sport, tow, snow, and auto, which kind of gives you a cool display there. And it automatically adjusts right here on this TRX screen that I'm showing up on the main 12-inch screen. So in the driver's display here, as you can see, you do have your speedometer, which has a really cool font to it. I can change that to kilometers to miles as well. But moving down here, you can see the vehicle info, and that tells you all the air fuel ratios, the boost pressure, the coolant. But let's get into some interesting stuff. Let me move back here a little bit. This is the meat and potatoes of it, and it shows you engine power and horsepower, 850. What if you boost it to more power? Does that change, I wonder? Anyways, as we move along, you can see torque is there and intake temperature, blah, blah, blah. But I really like the horsepower piece. It also has the off-road version. It shows you a pitch and roll. It shows you wheel articulation and shows you your drivetrain, drive 
That's pretty cool. Performance, man. Look at the stuff they have. G-forces, a lap timer, your lap history, your top speed. It actually saves your top speed. Oh my god, it's crazy. All this stuff you'd expect in like a Viper, not in a TRX. Your G-forces. Okay, maybe we'll skip that one. I love the fact that it doesn't just show you in the driver's display. It shows in the center console so everybody in the truck can see what you're doing. How awesome is that? You can add different widgets. You can have different gauges. Like, check this out. This is awesome to have your G-force meters. Like, this is in a truck. I just find this, like, hilarious, the fact they give you all this data. Look at this. It's got a rolling RPM and torque, power and torque and history. What gear you're in? Oh, my God. Vehicle dynamics. It's just wild. And other than that, it's pretty much the same as the Ram Rebel or my Ram Bighorn. But really, guys... It's all about the engine and the drive. So let's take this thing for a drive. This is sucking all the oxygen out of my lungs. This thing is fast, but it's smooth fast because that's what this review is about. The drive part is about how can you live with this car as a daily driver? Yes, it is fast, clearly. But how does it park? How is it in a parking lot? How's the bumps? How's the steering? I'm gonna tell you all about that. Okay, so let's start off with steering. Steering is good. It's pretty much exactly the same as the Ram I drive, so if you don't drive a Ram, obviously you don't know what the hell I'm talking about, but I will say that it's pretty steering. Like, watch my hands and just watch in front of us. So I would say that it's pretty good. It is a little bit heavier, because obviously these have really wide, big tires so that does make a difference i'm sure this if this had regular street tires it would be pretty much the same as my ram i don't think it'd be any different they're very smooth it's very comfortable but one thing i want to point out is ram does a very good job at insulation this is very quiet it's a quiet cabin uh, what isn't quiet though is the supercharger the supercharger is very loud way louder than the exhaust i can barely hear the exhaust i can hear the engine sort of like listen supercharge wine right supercharger wine and then you can hear the engine, but the supercharger wine definitely takes command over everything else. Other than that, it's pretty much the same as my Ram. It's a little bit stiffer. This de definitely does feel a little bit stiffer than the regular Ram. You can hear that in my voice as we go over these bumps here. But that makes, makes me realize that it's the tires and the suspension travel more than anything else. But I, yeah, it is a little bit stiffer than my Ram. Yeah. And as far as suspension, obviously with these Bilstein shocks and the reinforced steel frame, it is definitely stiffer and obviously it's bigger tires. It is stiffer than the regular Ram, that's to be noted. Um, is it uncontrollably stiff? No, I think it's decent. I'm on a really bumpy road here and it's not too, too bad. Um, this thing can tow 8,100 pounds, so I'm not sure how it's gonna drive with a trailer, but I'm sure it'll be pretty stiff just based on kind of what I'm feeling right here. Um, I'm pretty excited to take this to a parking lot to show you how big this thing is in a parking spot. But listen how quiet it is now. It's quiet. I can hear a little rumble of the engine, but it is very quiet. One of the things they were talk talking about is insulation, how much insulation they put in this Ram. All right, let's, uh, this is a, it's a bit dead blind corner here, so I'll have power. That's the cool part, power. I just love having this kind of power. Oh man, should I even look at the miles per gallon? What is also super noticeable is how high I'm sitting. Yes, this is two inches higher, but I feel with this big hood and the fact I got these monster fender flares in my rear, view mirror, rear side mirror there, it just feels big and meaty and bulky and what it's supposed to be like. Something really cool there is this thing squats under acceleration. When I'm pinning it, this thing squats and pulls away. Um, how does it handle? Yes, it does have a little bit of body roll to it. It's obviously not super planted. Just the fact that it sits so high and with this off-roading suspension, it does sit well, but it does steer very well when I'm, when I'm steering it pretty direct. Obviously, this is still a big SUV. It is definitely more direct than the regular Ram or definitely better than the F-150s and the Silverados we've had in the past. You know, it's crazy to think the fact that on the cluster, you've got that performance section that lets you go through like speed timers and zero to 60 and like launch times and top speed, like it saves the top speed you've done and your G forces and man, it's just like, we're in a truck. Like I can see the comments blowing up saying like, you're in a truck. 
why do you need to have all this data? So if you're not familiar with the RAM, it basically has buttons behind the steering wheel. So people would expect those to be shifters. Well, no, the shifters in this specific case are above those buttons. Those buttons are really for the, the volume controls and switching stations and stuff like that. And I really like them in my RAM. In this one though, when I've got the shifters up and the shifters down, it's kind of confusing. I actually hit these a couple of times trying to shift, but then the radio station would change. So that's the only really concern I would do about these steering wheels. But I get it. Again, with this much power, having paddle shifters do kind of make sense for those that want to use the Flappy Battle gearbox. And there's so many customizable things you have in here. Like you hit the TRX button and look, you've got sport, tow, snow, auto. You can adjust the transmission, the stability port. You can adjust all the stuff you'd expect to in a car, but we're in a truck. We're in a truck. <laughs> a truck that can tow 8,100 pounds. A truck that can go off-road and is designed to be jumped at that. That is crazy. The only negative you can find on this thing, besides obviously if you have the pockets to afford it, is the fuel. That's the only thing. But you make 702 horsepower for God's sakes. Yeah, killer. <laughs> Pulling away from somebody at a light when they have the window open and you're making a left turn, which I just did, and you're on the, on the throttle and it's like, Brrr! it's just like those people must be thinking, man, that sounds so good. Because in here, you can't really hear it as well as you can outside. Outside, this thing is a screamer. Inside, it's like, you can hear it, but it's like kind of quieter and more subtle because obviously I didn't want to have this like droning noise every time we drove this thing. Because about 15, I'm about 15 RPM here and it's good. You know what I'm excited about? I'm excited about Phil letting us take this thing to the track so we can drag race a whole bunch of fast cars and whoop them. That's what I'm excited about. Hope you guys like this review because hopefully we get more of this truck on the channel. As always, please consider subscribing and thanks for watching.